Alright, last night I finished welding the uh, the swing arm for this. I decided to make this thing out of aluminum just because it's the obvious choice for a swing arm like this. This thing weighs like almost nothing, so I can kind of see why people like aluminum so much because it's like super lightweight. Now, it's not completely done. We still need to add the mounts for the top to add the shock onto here. I, I'm not sure if I'm going to use this. I do have this perfectly sized looking shock, but I'm not really sure if this is going to be strong enough. It's kind of a weak little coil. So I did buy on Amazon a couple days ago a bigger shock with a bigger coil, a bigger spring. So uh, we may use this, we may use the other one. I'm not really sure yet. So let's just leave that. We'll figure that out later when the other shock gets here. Now, on it, honestly, I haven't really decided yet on what exactly we are building. Obviously, I haven't uploaded part one yet. Uh, I upload that in four days. And with this thing, I'm kind of just, I'm, I'm winging it. I just, whatever this turns out to be is what we're building. It started off as just a, mi a mini bike using a motorcycle engine, then it turned into this thing with front and rear suspension. So now I'm at the point where it's like, well, we may, we might as well make this thing kind of look like a miniature motorcycle, possibly something that looks like a pre-existing other motorcycle. And I'm kind of thinking, I, re I really like the look of a Ducati monster. The, the year, the model where they had, it was, you can see more of the, uh, more of the chassis. They didn't really have any plastics on that model or year, whatever Ducati monster, where it has two pieces of tubing going from the triple tree down around the engine on both sides, connecting from the front to the back and having cross bracing in between. I really like the look of that and I may try and copy that. Try, I may try to make this thing look like a miniature Ducati monster using a cheap Chinese garbage engine because a Ducati monster is a V twin, I think, or V4, the V twin, and this thing's a V twin. So we may try and do that. I may try to make this thing look like a uh, a Ducati monster, but I haven't really decided that. Uh, right now, I'm just kind of building it, and then whatever it turns out to be is whatever we've been building so far. So let's uh, let's start working on building the frame. I'm gonna start here. We need to figure out a way to connect the swing arm to the engine, and then from here we'll somehow connect the triple tree to the rest of the frame and start working on that. Snug on there, but it works. You can always remove more material. We interrupt our, re our regular scheduled programming to bring you, I bought some things on eBay. Let's see what they are. First thing we do with these, take off the spring, throw it away. Oh man, this thing's oily. <laughs> I bought a six jaw chuck. Oh, this thing's slimy. There's the backing plate. You can always tell this stuff comes from China when it's covered in smelly oil. 
Isn't this supposed to like register with the backing plate and not have like quarter inch of play? <laughs> Let's hope this works. And then the other thing that I bought, this is a 5C collet chuck. And this thing's also covered in oil. It's slimy. Yeah, I've always wanted a collet chuck, and I've also always wanted a six jaw chuck, and I finally, I finally did it. Let's put the six jaw on the lathe and see what it looks like. Yeah, this backing plate doesn't register on the back of the chuck, on the chuck, so I'm gonna have to, uh, I, I, I guess I'm gonna have to dial it in once I put it on the lathe. <laughs> For some reason, these just look way cooler, I think. Ah, oh, lovely! Yeah, let me uh, let me dial this thing in. I guess it's like what? It's it's nine thou off. It's not great, but it's not terrible, I guess. All right, just after two minutes of dialing it in, I got it pretty close, but it's not exactly perfect. It's still like half a thou off, but it's good enough. Uh, I can always further fine tune it later. Let's, uh, let's test to see if any part that I put in here is accurate. Alright, so this is the closest thing I have to precision ground round stock. Let's test the accuracy of this thing. Ah, oh, what the f... Oh, what? Are you kidding me? I it Oh, that's not good. That's you, are you kidding me? That's it? It that that is almost 20 thou off. Are you kidding me? I mean I mean granted this wasn't the most expensive six jaw chuck that I found. It wasn't the cheapest either. This was $400, but it was from eBay, and I'm pretty sure it shipped from China, even though it said it ships from California. Uh, I'm going to have to do some research on these, see if I can get it dialed in a little bit better. Let's see, how is, how is it at the end? How is it towards the end? It's even worse. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna have to do some research on these six jaw chucks and see if I can get it a little bit more accurate. In the meantime, I guess I'll be putting the three jaw chuck back on here. Crap. I wish I knew a machinist that I could ask. Do I know any machinists? Let's just see what this thing looks like when it's spinning. Ah, look at, ah! Okay, first of all, it's spraying oil everywhere. Second of all, it's, okay, I, I don't think it's the chuck's fault. I, it's, I, it looks like it's the backing plate. Look at that. This entire chuck is wobbling like this instead of like this. So I don't think it's the chuck's fault, thank God. I think it's the backing plate. So let me take the chuck off the backing plate, let me machine the back of this, or the front of this, and see if we can get the backing plate to, because I, I, I think you can just see this thing wobbling like this. Alright, 
So I resurfaced the backing plate and you can clearly see that it was off by a lot. I didn't bother to measure it, but it was off by a lot. And I re-chucked this, uh, re-put this uh, chuck back on the backing plate and I re-dialed it in. It's now even way better than it was before. So now, let's put some stock in this thing and see if that fixed the problem. All right, putting the same piece of round stock in here. Just like that. God, I hope that worked. If it didn't work, then I'm not gonna be happy. Ooh, so it's, okay, so. So it's not perfect, but it's way better than the three jaw chuck would ever be. Let's check it further out. Ooh, it's, yeah, it's about a six or seven thou off. But it at least is better than the three jaw chuck. The three jaw is like seven to ten thou off whenever I put something in here. So at least this is kinda better than than the other one, than the three jaw. I mean, close to the jaws, it has only like one thou of run out. So I want to say it's way better than the uh, than the three jaw chuck. So I'm I'm happy with this now. Crisis averted. It wasn't the chuck's fault. It was the backing plate. Uh, you just have to machine them before putting the chuck on the backing plate. So anyway, let's continue with our regularly scheduled program. Let's continue working on the mini motorcycle that we're working on. So after using the new six jaw chuck for only half a day, I gotta say, I do like this thing. It seems to be way more accurate than a three jaw chuck. You can just simply put a piece of metal in here and it seems to have way more accuracy and less run out than a simple three jaw chuck. Three jaw chuck, you put something in here, it's really off center, has a lot of run out and then you have to kind of like, you know, hit it around a little bit, move it around to get it to, uh, to be true. So I, I, yeah, I do like this thing. I'm glad I bought it.
Alright, so we got the beginnings of the frame kind of started on this thing. I know it looks a little weird it being basically just a square little box, but once I do more of the frame, this, it'll make sense why I did it like this. And we also got the swing arm tacked into place. Now, I'm not 100% sure on exactly where these need to be in relation to this dimension. Uh, I'm not sure where the swing arm is going to be sitting when we're going to be riding this thing, and that affects where these have to be, so therefore the chain doesn't stretch when the suspension moves up. We learned that on the C on the CBR 600 reverse trike. So now I'm, I'm pretty excited about this product. This thing's turning out to be pretty awesome. I'm really glad we didn't choose to do the cheap, easy option. It's airplane. The cheap, easy option of just doing a bare mini bike frame, no suspension. I'm glad we, cho we chose to do this because this thing is starting to turn out into really something really cool. And I'm excited on finishing this. Now, I know I've been calling this engine just a cheap Chinese garbage engine, and it kind of is, but I, was started, I started looking into the specs of this engine. It does rev up to 11,000 RPM, and it has a horsepower of 28. 28 horsepower from 250 cc, that's pretty decent for a little engine like this. So yeah, this thing's gonna be going really fast considering the, the heaviest thing on here is the engine. These tires weigh nothing, you know, most of the, I'm gonna try to make the frame as lightweight as possible. So yeah, this thing's gonna be pretty fast. So I'm actually, I'm getting pretty excited about this project. But for now, we do have to, uh, Put, to, put this thing to the side because the power steering column that I ordered for the CBR1000 project finally got here today in the mail and I need to pull out the CBR1000 project and put the power steering on it so therefore we can finally paint and finalize that project. I know I've been talking about doing that for over a month now, but now we are finally ready to actually do it. So for now with this project we need to disassemble it, put it to the side and uh, start painting the CBR1000 project. And I'm not sure exactly when we're going to pull this thing back out and continue working on it. But hopefully it's soon because I'm starting to get excited about this thing. So I guess for now, that's the end of this video. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Well, I immediately messed that up and... Messed up the tungsten. Great, that was brand new. Let me fix that. Okay, let's try this again. Just try not to suck at welding. So, you may be noticing this huge, ugly spot right here. This, for some reason, I cannot figure out why, but for some reason, when I'm welding right here, it just, it bubbles and just starts getting like a ton of porosity, corrosion, whatever you call it with aluminum where the molten aluminum just starts bubbling and just starts getting all corroded and ugly looking. For some reason, I cannot get rid of whatever is right in here. I, I tried to fix this like five times. I kept... Uh, grinding away the material, like it drilled into here, trying to get rid of the corroded material. And every time I tried to fix it, it would just get bigger and bigger and worse. And now it's just some giant ugly spot right here where you can even still see the corrosion right there. And the more I try to fix it, the worse it gets. So unfortunately, yeah, it's uh, right on the top, right where you're going to be looking at it. And I don't want to keep trying to fix it because the more I try to fix it, the worse and bigger it gets. So you, it's just going to be something where, yeah, it just looks super ugly and I give up trying to fix it. Whoops! <laughs> My bad. Uh, this is actually the second time that the thing's fallen down. So let's just leave that.